What's up YouTube and welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, my name is Jocelyn and I make videos on motherhood and lifestyle. So if that's your kind of jazz, make sure you press that subscribe button. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to become a foster parent. And if you feel like you have enough love to give, then I definitely encourage you to watch the rest of this video and find out how you can get licensed to become a foster parent. So step number one is gonna to be to come to a point where you know for sure that you wanna be a foster parent. So if you're married or you have children, sit down and have a conversation with them, talk about whether or not they would wanna do it, whether or not it'll be a good fit for your family. You definitely want it to be a good thing, not just for the foster kids, but also for you and your family. Step number two is going to be to determine whether you want to get licensed through the county or whether you want to get licensed through an FFA agency, which stands for Foster Family Agency. So if you choose to get licensed through your county, you're going to be a part of an organization that is huge, okay? These are all the people in your county that decided to make the same decision as you to become a foster parent. If you're one of those people who needs a more personal relation with the people that you're involved with, if you like that one-on-one -on -one attention, if you feel like you need that one-on-one -on -one support, then an FFA agency will probably be a better fit for you because with the FFA, they have smaller caseloads. You have your own personal social worker that will be with you no matter who is placed in your home. And it's just a more personal relationship when you go with a smaller agency. My husband and I chose to go with the FFA. We've been with them for three years and we, we love it. There's a lot that comes with being a foster parent and as much as we might think that we have all that these kids need, we don't, okay? I'm just gonna be real. We all need support. We all need someone that might have something else to offer because it, it takes a village really to raise these kids. With an FFA agency, you really get the opportunity to have those personal relationships with all the people in your organization and you can get to know everybody on a first name basis. I can't say the same for the county because there's so many people involved in the county that you're basically just another foster parent, so. If you're okay with that, then that's fine. But if you want something more personal, then I would recommend going with the FFA agency. So the next step is going to be to attend an orientation. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to good old Google, okay? Type in foster care agency. You're gonna get a list of agencies in your county, in your state, whatever it may be. And you start calling them, you start emailing them, let them know, hey, I'm interested in being a foster parent and I want to attend an orientation. I want to get to know you. I want to know what steps I need to take in order to get my license. I recommend that you attend at least three orientations so that you can really give your, yourself the opportunity to make a choice when it comes to who you want to work with. When you hear the word orientation, you might think boring. It's not going to be boring like going to a work orientation or going to like a school orientation because this is something that you're passionate about. This is something that you want for your life. So it's going to be exciting to go to these places and to meet these people that you get to go on this journey with. So I promise you it is worth your while. You will get a lot of information on what to expect. You'll get to learn more about just what it is to be a foster parent because obviously if you've never done it before, you know nothing about it. So orientations are a great chance to just get more information and meet the right people. Step number four is the application process, okay? This is the boring part. This is the paperwork part, but this is part of the process, so bear with me. During the application process, they're gonna have you fill out forms. It's gonna require for you to give them basic information on yourself, on your household. They're gonna wanna know your income. They're gonna wanna know who lives in your house. They wanna, they're gonna wanna know where you come from they're going to want to know just basic information i promise it's it's not a hard thing to do it's just not the fun part of the process be sure to check back on my channel for my video on how to fill out the application i'm going to be going step by step breaking it down giving you my tips on how to fill out the application so make sure you check back for that so step number five is going to be completing a background check Yes, if you're a criminal, this is your chance to run, okay? Because being a foster parent is not for you. I'm totally joking, but it's gonna be a basic background check, same kind of background check that you would take if you're going to get a job or you're applying for an apartment. 
They just want to know if you're a felon or not, okay? Let's just be real. Step number six. Now's the fun part. Attending 16 hours of classes slash trainings. <laughs> now, you are going to learn so much from these trainings. These trainings are going to break down everything there is to know about being a foster parent. You're going to learn about everything. <laughs> You're going to learn everything, okay? Yes, it's a lot of hours, but you will learn so much and you will feel better prepared to be a foster parent because once you get this license, honey, you are going to be a foster parent. You are going to be called and asked to take on these kids. So take your trainings seriously, take your notepad, take notes, take everything that they're saying and soak it up like a sponge because I'm telling you, once you get that license, you are licensed. So you're gonna be expected to do the things that they're asking of you in these trainings. So make sure you're paying attention, all right? The good thing about these trainings is once you take the trainings, you're good. You have the trainings, they're all in your mind. You remembered every word they said and you're good. Scratch that, that's not true. Every year they require for you to do at least four hours of training just to kind of remind you of the things that are expected of you. You have a whole year to do it. It's not a big deal. Most of it is basic common sense. First aid and CPR are going to be a part of the hours that you have to get in your training. This certification does expire, so you will have to renew it every two years. Step number seven is going to be the home study. A home study is one of the longer parts of the application process. This is where you're gonna meet with the social worker and you're gonna talk about your life. You're gonna talk about your childhood. You're gonna talk about your upbringing, your family dynamics, your relationships with your siblings, family, you know, different things you may have gone through as a child. They're gonna wanna know everything there is to know about you because they wanna know who you are. They wanna know that they can trust you. Make sure you're being honest and just remind yourself that even though it might be uncomfortable, it's a part of the process and you wanna let yourself be vulnerable with these people because you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable situation. Taking on these kids, they're gonna be vulnerable. So you wanna just kinda of get used to that feeling because that's how it's gonna be. Moving on to step number eight, we're almost done. I promise you I'm gonna let you guys out of here soon. Class is almost over. So step number eight is going to be the inspection. They're gonna make sure that your home is safe. You have adequate space for the children. It's clean. It's an environment where children can be children. There's no need to worry. I know home inspection sounds scary, but there's literally a checklist that they'll give you before they even come so that you can make sure that you meet the needs that they're requiring you to meet. So don't be afraid. Most of this stuff is very simple and very easy. So you went to the orientation, you got a background check, you got your home inspected, you did this, you did that. Guess what? You're officially licensed. <laughs> so now that you're licensed, it's time to get to work. You will eventually get a call for your first placement. If you wanna know what that's like, if you feel like you need a breakdown of how that might go, make sure you check back for my video on what to expect during a placement. I'm here for you, so if you have a question, feel free to leave a comment below. I will get back to you. Congratulations, I'm so proud of you. You took this step towards something new. If you have not yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe, smash the like button. See you guys in my next video.